Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today I've got a quick one for you. This one, we're going to be debugging some Modbus RTU. I'm working on a customer integration, and I ran into a problem getting a motor controller to work, and it had me stumped for a little while, and I want to go over exactly what's going on and how you fix it. So first of all, let's go down here and look at this hardware. This is the back plane here, and admittedly it looks kind of busy for this problem, but really what we want to focus on is the RS-485. So I have 485 right here, comes out, and it goes into this motor controller, and this controller drives this brushless DC motor here. So basically I just have an app that I'm running on here that I want to control this to drive this. It's also controlling a bunch of these other things, but for right now, let's just focus on this. Let's go take a look at the code at what I've got going on and the problem I'm seeing. Here is the application loop that I'm trying to drive. It's really, really simple. I'm just trying to run for five seconds clockwise, stop, wait a second, and then run counterclockwise for five seconds. That's all it's supposed to do. Yet, it's not moving at all, and in fact, it's timing out up here when it's trying to create the motor controller and the motor. So what I'm getting is a failure on the RS-485. I'm getting, right now I'm getting a timeout. I don't always see a timeout. Sometimes I see a CRC error, though. So we have some sort of a communication problem when it's trying to initialize this motor controller long before it ever gets to this run loop. I instrumented the code all the way down into the driver a lot, trying to figure out exactly where this was happening. I thought it was a code problem. Turns out that once I got out the oscilloscope, you could see that it is not a code problem. It was really, really obvious what the problem was as soon as I did that. Unfortunately, it took me over a day to figure out that I needed to get out the oscilloscope and look at the scope. But let's go take a look at the electrical signals on this and hopefully this will save you some time in the future. When this controller initializes, it sends a command off to the device for some initialization parameters. And we have a send and receive. You can see right here, I've got eight bytes that I sent, and the scope is even decoding these, and they're coming in fine. And then this is the response here, and you can see the decoder even says this is all red. But let me zoom in on this to give you a little bit more of a picture on what it is that we're looking at. Look at this absolute garbage. It looks like there's capacitance on the line, right? It is not getting these nice square waves. Instead, we're getting these rounded saw-like behaviors. It is absolutely not what you want, and this absolutely tells me that I have a problem Electrically, it is not a code problem. When you see this, this is a solid indicator that you need a terminating resistor on the bus. I've got a 120 ohm resistor. I'm just going to attach it between the A and B lines. As you saw on this back plane, that cable is, you know, six inches at best in length. So I can actually put it anywhere on it. Typically, you'd want it all the way out at the end by the device, but again, this cable is really short, so I'm just going to attach it right to the screw terminals on this Project Lab board, and we'll take a look at what happens uh, to this signal when I do that. You can see the motor starts turning immediately. I've made no changes to the code. The app was already running just in a retry loop and it's already running now. Let's go take a look at the scope traces now. You can see how much cleaner this response is now. It's gotten a lot more square. We don't have a really, really nasty sawtooth and the high side is coming up almost all the way to this baseline high. Now, there are still these ramps on these. These could be cleaned up by adding a like a 470 ohm bias resistor on this line to pull it high. And in fact, if we looked at B, it might have the same rounded stuff on low so we could bias the B line to low. If I were going to install this uh, on site, I would probably put some bias resistors in there to clean this up even further. But you can see that just adding that terminating resistor, again, 120 ohm between A and B, was enough to clean this up 
and get this thing working. So there you have it. Remember, anytime you're working on hardware or IoT solutions, the problems aren't always in your code. Take a look at the electrical signals and see if that might be causing the problems that you're having. In this case, all I needed to do was add that terminating resistor to the bus and then everything started working. Would have been nice if I had thought about it eh, a day or two ago, but that's how it goes. Hopefully you found this interesting and maybe it saved somebody else a little bit of time in debugging their solution. Thanks for watching.